Coming up today on this guy's ranch, we're answering questions on how big a compressor do you need to do a paint job at home. All this coming up. Today is a follow-up video on uh, some questions that I had from a previous video on this paint gun here. So the question was this, how big of a compressor do I need to do a paint job at home? Alright, so we have our three types of compressors here that you're going to be running into at home. You'll have your 3 horsepower 5 to 10 gallon pancake. You'll have your 20 to 30 gallon stand-up, which will most likely have some wheels on it. I'll try to provide some pictures. And then you have a bigger unit, like I have over here in the corner, the 60 gallon compressor that you can tackle any paint job with. Now, I could get into the CFMs and that's, that's not really gonna help you. All you need to know is this. All three of these compressors will run your paint gun. It's just for how long will they run your paint gun. So you can do lots of paint work with a, with a three horsepower compressor. I used to do touch up work for a place called Touch Up Masters and we used smaller paint guns and smaller equipment and we did small touch-up touch-ups it was auction work so there was lots of work to do so and you can make money on these small touch-up jobs if you have a three horsepower compressor it's going to keep you into a small area you're going to need edge lines to work off of uh, i'll show you an example um, so the paint gun will work, it's just going to be for a, a small amount of time, so you have to do a small area when you're using a small compressor, so you're going to be working on maybe a bottom of a fender, maybe on, on the edge of a bumper, possibly a rocker panel, depending on how big it is, but the biggest thing you, you want to remember is you want to be painting, in, you, you want to be painting where you have full stream of air. If your air pressure goes down, then it's just going to be fluid coming out of your gun if it's a if it's a gravity gun like this. And uh, you won't get the desired results. So if you have a small compressor, you want to keep your paint areas as small as possible. And uh, I'll show you some real world examples. Now if you have a 20 to 30 gallon compressor, you're going to be able to do bigger areas. You're going to be able to do areas like maybe a couple of doors, definitely a door and a fender. So a box side on a truck maybe. Uh, where you should get leery is trying to tackle like a hood which requires a large volume of air. You, you want to be painting where you can maintain air pressure. So when you hear that compressor coming on when you're painting it means that you know you're working with recovery and the, your, your air recovery may not be as quick with a compressor like this. So pay attention to the size of the area that you're, you're working. Keep your area as small as possible. And if you have a 60 gallon compressor or stand up or a, a lay down, you have no limitations other than your abilities to get around, get around the vehicle. So you can paint the whole thing with a 60 gallon compressor. But keep in mind, paint's expensive these days, and something has to be pretty special to get a complete paint job. Tim Tim Burns, or Astral Auto Repair, had a few other questions regarding cup size. So, uh, this is a 600 mil cup, and you could basically get away with painting a couple of doors, a fender, a box side. A trunk lid. A hood is a different animal. You're going to be running out of paint with, with a 600 mil cup. Uh, if you're painting the hood of a car, you can easily take a quart of paint by itself just to get the finish looking the way you want it to. Uh, as far as gun care, you want to get as strong and thinner as possible. A gun wash is even better. Clean out your guns, take them apart, 
Uh, most guns come with a brush kit, so you can clean them up. Uh, another trick I used to, I like to use if uh, if you get some build up inside, I, I like to take paint stripper. I have a video on that. I'll post a link to that. So paint stripper will absolutely save a gun that had hardened paint residue in it. So that's a that's a good tech tip there. So every once in a while, I'll take a spray spray bomb like this one and uh, take my gun completely apart, spray it, spray all the parts and pieces that come apart with this, clean it up, and uh, you'll want to use some water to neutralize all the parts and pieces because uh, you'll, you'll get a chemical burn on your skin. Soak everything in this and it will bring your gun back to like new condition. So uh, another question was, how many paint jobs can you get out of one of these cheap guns? Well, here's that answer. If you're DIYing it at home, you probably won't wear it out as long as you keep it clean. Uh, if you're using it every day, there's going to be a time come where that paint gun's going to fail you. And the reason why professional painters will use more expensive equipment because they tend to last a lifetime. Uh, the paint that you're putting in a lot of these cheap guns is more expensive than the gun themselves. The nature of these this series was to give people guns that will work at home. That's why I say stay away from the HVLP guns. Although they operate at a much lower pressure between some guns between 9 to 25 PSI. Any gun that operates in the 25 PSI range. For a HVLP gun to work correctly, you need airflow. And the quarter inch fittings that most uh, DIYers use at home will not provide the volume of air to make a HVLP gun work. That's why I, uh, I am looking for high efficiency guns, which work with our air hoses at home. And as far as temperature goes, you, you want to pick a solvent that works at the temperature that you're going to be painting at. Another uh, good hint is to warm up the panels before you're painting them if you're working in a cold environment. If you have a cold panel and you're putting paint on that's at room temperature, you're going to get a sag. A run will just ruin your day. So, so I'd like to thank Michael K and Astral Auto Repairs for the questions. Hopefully this answered them. And if you have any other questions, please leave them in the comment section down below. I'll, I'll answer that question there. Or maybe I'll just make a video like this one and uh, hopefully great questions can help out other viewers. So hopefully this helps you out. And if it did, it helps us out when you hit that subscribe button, and it's going to be right there. You can watch another video right around here. We have quite a few videos on, on painting topic. And uh, until the next time.